Have you ever wondered why in the middle of the day, the sky is a brilliant blue, but at the end of the day, you'll find colors of orange, yellow, and maybe even reds. Well, today at High School Physics Explained, I'm going to discuss the physics behind why the sky is blue. Before I'm going to go and explain what is going on, I'm going to give you a demonstration that will give us an insight of what is occurring. And what I have here is a fish tank. And a fish tank is filled with water and I've placed in it a small amount of milk. So that's why it has this slightly milky color. And if you understand milk, milk is actually white because it contains tiny droplets of oil and the light is scattered from each of those tiny little droplets of oil and that causes us to see the slightly white nature. And of course, skim milk has less of that oil and therefore it looks a little more watery. A full cream milk looks definitely more white because of the increased levels of oil. And what I have here is a torch. And that torch is going to be our representation of the sun. And the water is going to be our representation of the sky. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass light through the water. I want to see what happens to the water. Now, before we start, I want you to see that the light is white. Okay, these are LEDs and we get white light, so we get predominantly all frequencies coming out of the LEDs. Now, if I fire the light in sideways like so, you may notice that the water is slightly a bluish tinge. It's not pure white. But what is coming out the other end? So let me turn it a 90 degrees and show you. So what you now see is not a bluish tinge at all. You see a slightly yellowish tinge. Something is happening to the light as it goes through the medium. Some of the blue seems to get scattered and that's what you get when you see it on the side. What's left at the other end is the yellow and that in essence is very similar to what happens to the light as it goes through the atmosphere. Let me explain. In essence, the type of scattering that we are referring to is called Rayleigh scattering. And Rayleigh scattering, named after Lord Rayleigh who first described it, is where light, which is a form of electromagnetic radiation, interacts with molecules and it causes light, in this case, to be scattered. Now Rayleigh scattering is particular in the case where the molecules are significantly smaller than a tenth of the wavelength that is encountering. Now our Molecules we're dealing with in our atmosphere are basically nitrogen and oxygen and their diameter is about 0.2 of a nanometer and light in terms of visible light ranges anywhere from roughly 480 to 700 nanometers. So this is definitely the case in terms of the effect we're going to get. There's another form of scattering called me scattering and that is when the particles are significantly larger and that gives rise to things that it helps us understand why for example clouds are white but that's maybe a topic of another video. But what is happening when the wave of light interacts with oxygen? So as a quick review, let's have a close look at what oxygen is comprised of. And you see that oxygen is basically two atoms joined together. The little black spots represent the nuclei. And the electrons are arranged. And in this case, these blue dots are the electrons in the outer shell. Now, this is a simplistic model. But in essence, we have what we call a covalent bond where the electrons are shared. Now, when we have an interaction of a wave, a wave is of course an alternating electric field and magnetic field. And so what happens is, is that the electrons here are going to be pushed one side or to another. But what we say is this is where it becomes what we call a dipole. And that is it becomes slightly positively charged on one side and slightly negatively charged as the electrons are affected by the magnetic field component of our electromagnetic radiation. Now, because this is a fluctuating electric field and magnetic field, then we're going to have a fluctuating dipole. And that means my electrons are moving rapidly backwards and forwards, or the net charge is moving rapidly backwards and forwards. And that results in a release of electromagnetic radiation coming off our atom. And of course, that means it's scattering a particular wavelength of light. 
Now, the reality is, is that light isn't a single wavelength. It is a combination of a number of wavelengths. And if I use the two extremes, we have, of course, red at one end and blue at the other. That is, you're going to get some uh, Rayleigh scattering in the red wavelengths and some Rayleigh scattering in the blue wavelengths. But the amount of scattering that occurs is indirectly proportional to the wavelength. In specific, the intensity you're going to get is proportional to one over the wavelength to the power of four. In other words, we're going to get a significantly more amount of blue light scattering than we would for red. So if I were to graph the percentage of the amount of scattering relative to the wavelength, you can see I have a significantly larger proportion of Rayleigh scattering in the blue wavelength than I do in the red. So let's take that information and now examine what you would see at different times of the day. So here we have the Earth and we have this material here on the outside, which represents our atmosphere. Now, I will make the point here is that this is not according to scale. The atmosphere is much thinner relative to the Earth, but it's there as a representation to give you a sense of what's going on. So direct sunlight, of course, is coming onto the Earth, but it's passing through a very thin layer of atmosphere. Nonetheless, you're going to get Rayleigh scattering as it moves away from the direct beam. That is, you're going to see predominantly white light. It's fairly thin atmosphere that's going through. If you were to somehow, theoretically speaking, look directly at the sun, you're going to see some whiteness over here. But the further away you are from the sun, the more blue you will see. So take this example here of a mountain scene in New Zealand. You can see that the sky is very blue and if I were to look towards the direction of the sun, it will be less blue, but further away, it will be blue because we're getting a lot of valley scattering, not just, of course, of the initial uh, light coming from the sun, but it continues to scatter across the sky. And so you get this really rich blue color. So what about later in the day? Because the Earth is rotating in that direction, what we have here is sunset. And down here we have sunrise. I'm just going to concentrate up here what is happening to sunset. We have, of course, rally scattering going on as the light passes through the atmosphere. But we now have a significantly larger amount of the light passing through the atmosphere. So there's going to be a lot more rally scattering along as it passes through the atmosphere. Since all this blue light is scattered, what you're going to get left over is going to be the light minus all the blue frequencies, or at least a significant drop of all the blue frequencies coming through. So if you were looking at the light from this end, you would predominantly see only, let's say, the oranges and the reds and so forth passing through because most of the blue light has been scattered. So for example, in this image, and I took at sunset, you can see that after the sun has set, the only light that's really left is the mainly the reds. And that red light, of course, is striking the clouds. Now, this is also, of course, true when we look at sunrise. So this photo was taken at sunrise. And again, we have that particular hue of color that you're familiar with. Yes, there's some rally scattering up in the top, but the predominant wavelength that you are getting are the reds and the oranges and so forth. Just a thing as well is that what does the sun look like when it sets? Now I'm going to concentrate specifically here on the city of New York and I've positioned it in such a way that the sun, so to speak, is no longer now obviously New York would be is sitting over here, but we're dealing with the same here. It's a curvature of the Earth that we're dealing with. But in essence, the sun is now below the horizon. But in actual fact, the sun still might appear to those in New York because of the bending of light that takes place. Now, when the sun is sitting on the horizon from a visual perspective, 
then it actually is sitting below the horizon and you actually see the sun due to some refraction of the atmosphere. But this is when the amount of scattering is at its greatest. Now to demonstrate this, I have a series of photos that I took in New York as the sun sat on the horizon. Now the first photo shows you a normal exposure and the sun looks quite white. But then if I decrease the exposure, you can see that in the final image, what we have is the sun is very red and that is because that's pretty much the only wavelength left over after all the scattering has taken place. Again this is due to Rayleigh scattering. So I hope that has helped you understand briefly what Rayleigh scattering is and why the sky is blue in the middle of the day and orange yellow as the sun sets. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember like, share and subscribe. And by the way, drop a comment down below if the video particularly has been useful. And finally, consider supporting me via Patreon. The idea is to develop resources and equipment to continue to teach physics at a high school level. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.